Good evening. I'd like to call the regular city council meeting Monday, April 20th, 2015 to order. Do a roll call vote. Alderman Puttoff. Here. Ferrari. Here. Waldorf. Lacocious. Here. Perez. Here. Radke. Here. Mueller. Here. Sapienza. Mayor Harrell. We'll stand for the pledge. Can I get a motion for a temporary chairperson? Uh, I'd make a motion for Alderman Putoff. I'll second that. Motion made by Alderman Ferrari, seconded by Alderman Lococious. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, tonight we have presentations first from the Pru VFW Post 8232, Jim Kisprovich. Jim, if you could come up to the podium and tell us why you're here tonight. Thank you for allowing me to come here tonight. First of all, my name is Jim Kristopovich. I'm with the Pru Veterans of Foreign Wars. And the first item was I'd like to thank the city of Peru for the use of the Ron Wren Community Room for our monthly meetings. Second, I have a presentation to make for a check for $500 to the city of Peru for flag maintenance at Veterans Park. Okay? Now, I have two gentlemen with me are Andy Ruggiero, He's a trustee with the VFW, and Martin Hess, he's the commander to prove VFW. That's all I have for now. Well, gentlemen, we appreciate it, and thank you very much. And uh, certainly if you see the presentation we have at Veterans Park, our flags are waving proudly, and every little bit helps. Sure. So thank you very much. You're welcome. This is the Facebook photo. Uh, in addition, tonight we have a presentation from the Friends of Prue Pool, Bergner's fundraiser, and the check presentation. Claudia and Debbie are here tonight. Um, we want to thank everyone who bought our booklet from the Bergner's promotion. And we also want to thank two people who aren't part of the committee who sold booklets for us. One was Greg Vaccaro, and the other was Sherry Mazak. And we sure appreciate that. That upped our total. And we were, this amount we're presenting tonight is in addition to the $100 check that we received at the end of selling booklets. So we just were just totally up in the air when we got the amount from Bergner's. Because when we added the amount from Bergner's, we ended up with $2,000.07. And that's the most that we have raised at any of these Bergner's promotions. And this is number four. So we hope we can keep it up. <laughs> And um, the next thing we have coming up is a tag day. It's not until June 20th, but we hope you'll all donate to that. Um, we don't have to be standing with our hands out, but you can make a donation without that even. And hopefully we'll come up with something else in between now and June 20th. So thank all of you who shopped and used those booklets too. Okay, thank you, Claudia, Debbie, Sherry, for your help. We appreciate it.
next time on agenda is public comment. Do we have any cards requesting public comment? No, Your Honor. Uh, next item, minutes, regular meeting minutes of April 6, 2015. I move that we place them on file. Second. Motion by Alderman Radke, second by Alderman Ferrari to place the minutes on file. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, next item is reports, city clerk's report, report of sales, home rule use, telecommunications tax, Peru Police Department monthly report, and Peru Fire Department monthly report. What's I'll your a, desire? I'm sorry. I'll make a motion. Uh, we accept these reports and place them on file. I'll second that. Motion by Alderman Ferrari, second by Alderman Perez. If you notice on the Peru sales tax report, the comparisons we have from 2014 to 2015, it's about a 5% increase from the sales tax. So uh, that's in one month, and if that trend continues for the rest of the year, that's a pretty good sign for the city of Peru. Any other comments from the council? No other comments, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, committee reports, finance and safety services, disbursements, Alderman Radke, please. Your Honor, I have uh, disbursements for April 22nd, 2015. Total disbursements were $2,061,953.09. Uh, I move that we receive this report, place it on file, and pay the bills in the usual manner. I second that. A motion from Alderman Rackey with a second by Alderman Perez. Any discussion? Have a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Perez. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. I'll approve. Uh, tonight we also have a motion to approve the server replacement for connecting point computer centers in the amount of $14,832.90. I'll let the clerk give us a couple minutes to review on the need for the server. Well, the primary need for the server is our Windows operating system will no longer be supported by Microsoft. In addition to that, we've gotten uh, seven years of life out of the server, which is in current market conditions, a uh, uh, pretty good turnout for the server. And we've sort of been waiting uh, to get our engineering department implemented and some other things implemented and kind of determine what the overall city needs are prior to making the decision. So timing is going to work out great. By the time we order it, it'll be in the next budget cycle for us. and will probably be installed and up and running right about the time we're going to be no longer served by the uh, Microsoft changeover. So good timing and uh, going to be a nice upgrade. And the decision to go with Connecting Point? Well, we work with Connecting Point uh, on a number of different things. Primarily, there are, they work and partner with the city on our, our fiber optic network. They uh, house and host our website. In addition to that, they have our firewall. Uh, internet and uh, server protection that's located at Connecting Point. So they're a natural good partner for it, and the pricing was competitive. Okay. Uh, anybody with a motion tonight? I'll make a motion. I'll second that, Your Honor. A motion by Alderman Ferrari with a second by Alderman Perez to approve replacement of the server at $14,832.90. Any further discussion? We'll have a roll call vote. Alderman Puttoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Perez. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. All in favor. Um, we also have tonight a Route 6 presentation from Mr. Bob Vickery to kind of update us in the downtown area of what's going on with the Route 6 Association Group. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to let everyone know, uh, especially the people who have businesses along Route 6, uh, we've started the um, Route 6 banner program, and uh, we've got everything uh, pretty well set as far as the graphics, and we're starting to uh, solicit persons, sponsors of the uh, antique post. So if anyone, and we'd like everybody to know this, that uh, they can call City Hall here uh, and, uh, and ask for me, and we will accommodate them. Uh, the way the program works, if somebody buys a banner, they need to buy two. We pick one of the posts, and they pick one of the posts. And uh, I think there's nearly 50 of the uh, antique posts, so we're going to fill up the, uh, the first antique posts first. We'll see how it goes, and uh, then we'll end up uh, with the, uh, we'll go to the taller post. But, uh, so if you know of anyone that uh, would like to participate in the program, we'd like to make sure it gets out to everyone. 
Questions? Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Vickery. In addition, in the grant program, I think if the council remembers right, we allocated $25,000 for improvements for storefronts within the Route 6 area. And I believe at this date, we're right around 18,000 of businesses that have used that. So uh, uh, that's great interest that we've had in the city and happy to see that happening. Uh, in public services, Alderman Lacocious. Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor. Um, the Peru Public Library cash accounts, Alderman Mueller. Uh, yes, Your Honor. We have the Peru Public Library cash account summary for the period ending March 31st, 2015. Total funds available are $383,953.91. I'd like to make a motion that we accept this report and place it on file. A motion by Alderman Mueller with a second by Alderman Sapienza for the Peru Public Library cash account summary. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is the Peru Recreation Fund cash account summary. Yes, we also have that uh, for the period ending March 31st of 2015. Total funds available for the Peru Recreation Fund are $40,249.58. Make a motion that we receive this report and place it on file. So we have a motion from Alderman Mueller with a second from Alderman Sapienza that that report be received placed on file. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, next item, Alderman Lacocious. Uh, next we have, uh, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the purchase of two transformers from the low bidder TNR Electric for the Northern Partners Cooperative. Uh, the first one is a 2500 KVA transformer in the amount of $24,460 and the second one is a 2,000 KVA transformer in the amount of $20,740. Uh, I will make that a motion. A motion by Alderman Lacocious. Okay. Second by Alderman Mueller. Uh, for those two items, uh, any discussion? Alderman Lacocious, are those from the same company? Uh, yes, TNR Electric is supplying both okay. of them. So I guess we can include that on the same motion with the same bid. We'll have a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Perez. Aye. Bradkey. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Motion approved. Anything else, Alderman Lacocious? Uh, yes, we have one more uh, one more item. Uh, we'd like to authorize the mayor of the city clerk to execute the concurrence letter with the Division of Aeronautics for the airport parking lot and hangar access roadway base bid and alternate bid. I would like to make this a motion. A uh, motion by Alderman Kosha, second by Alderman Sapienza. Uh, discussion, Council? Any discussion? Eric, you want to update us a little bit on what the uh, need and where we're going with this? Yeah, so as you know, uh, moving forward with the developments at the airport, uh, we had the OSF hangar lease signed. Um, Division Aeronautics is part of that. this project. We had an alternate bid to extend the roadway and parking to that hangar. Um, they had requested of us a copy of that signed lease as well as a copy of the notice to proceed from OSF to their contractor to ensure that they are building a building. Um, we got all that documentation to Division Aeronautics. Uh, they have sent us the concurrence letter to award both portions of that project, the base and alternate. Um, we anticipate that happening this summer project. And then OSF, we've been sitting in weekly meetings with them online. Um, they're moving forward with their building construction. So I anticipate they'll be starting in the near future as well. Any additional questions from the council? Again, we have a motion made by Alderman Lacocia, second by Alderman Sapienza. We have a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Lacocia. Aye. Perez. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Any other reports from public services? Uh, that's all we have, Your Honor. Report of city attorney ordinances and resolutions. Clerk Bartley, you're on. Um, we have the ordinance amending the budget for fiscal year commencing May 1st, 2014 and ending April 30th, 2015 inclusive. And I will uh, direct any questions for any amendments to Finance Officer Miller. Uh, Mr. Miller, you want to update us again on those amendments and how it's handled in government when you do make adjustments to the budget? Absolutely. So we, uh, the former budget officer, Gary Hyland, and I went through uh, basically last year's or this year's current budget, seeing where we're at year to date with everything. 
obviously projects happen that <clears throat> were anticipated and the projects were that were anticipated don't end up happening so there's a need to amend uh, as a result so I don't think there's anything uh, too major on there um, we have the the addition of um, the finance officer the city engineer uh, all their related expense line items and then normal projects and about it, but if there's any questions, we'd be happy to answer. Uh, Council, is there any questions? Uh, it's typical in this fashion uh, that you reach for budget amendments when the budget is changed. And it's both in revenues and expenses. Uh, much of it is in savings that the city's had that's incurred on that uh, changeover. So we do have an ordinance on the floor. Is there a motion? So moved. Right. Motion by Alderman Ferrari with a second by right. Alderman Radke. Uh, roll call vote. Alderman Putoff? Aye. Ferrari? Aye. Precocious? Aye. Perez? Aye. Radke? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Sapienza? Uh, the other item in an ordinance fixing wages for the employees of the city of Peru, these are for non-collective bargaining employees. Uh, that will be held off for further discussion. Corporate Counsel, Doug Schweiger? Um, yes, Your Honor, we have an ordinance approving the uh, budget for fiscal year May 1, 2015, to April 30, 2016, both inclusive. Uh, BRD and the budget presented by the uh, city finance officer for the said fiscal year, a copy of which is here to attach, is hereby approved. Ordinance with the attached budget shall be promptly filed with the Laysell County Clerk. And again, any questions on that can be uh, addressed to uh, Justin. We have an ordinance on the floor. I move that we adopt the ordinance. Second. Uh, motion by Alderman Racky was second by Alderman Ferrari for the ordinance approving the budget for the fiscal year. Uh, any other discussion from the council's floor? I think it's positive that we have a balanced budget. We've removed uh, a, a large portion of the local government distributed funds from the budget. So even with that reduction, we still have a balanced budget. And hopefully there's upside on that. Uh, and there's a lot of projects in the budget as well that'll be beneficial to the city this year. Yeah, I, I think one of the keys is it's balanced, and of course, the amount of infrastructure that's going into this fiscal year is right around the eight million dollar range that we have budgeted for, and uh, certainly that's adding advancement to our city's infrastructure. We have a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Lacosha. Aye. Perez. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. All in favor. Next, we have an ordinance authorizing execution of a cable franchise agreement between the uh, city and Comcast. Uh, all of you have a copy of that ordinance uh, from two weeks ago. Uh, again, I received a call. Um, in the past hour from LaSalle City Attorney uh, Jim McFedrin, and he doesn't know if LaSalle is going to pass it tomorrow night or not, but this ordinance from the sample you have just adds in Section uh, 2 that the mayor and city clerk of the city of Peru and each of them, within their sole discretion, are hereby authorized to execute the franchise agreement, perform such other acts to affect its implementation. Um, so, you know, once you get word that LaSalle passes it, and Dave, you can follow up on that with the uh, mayor. So you are authorized to execute that franchise agreement. On um, Any uh, questions on that? This was uh, negotiated or discussed between LaSalle City Attorney Jim McFedrin and Scott Schweigert. So he's here. He'll answer any questions. He's more tech savvy than the old man. Uh, incidentally on that, uh, just so everybody uh, knows, uh, we don't get paid any different for two of us being here. Uh, it's been the same for the last 38 years. The retainer to our firm for attending the regular city council meetings 38 years ago was $3,600 a year and it's still $3,600 a year. which. I think last year worked out to about $19 an hour. But that's just for the regular city council meeting. So Yeah, and what Doug means by that is know. they're not getting paid anything. It stayed the same. Doug's getting all the pay, and Scott's working for free. Yeah. But uh, we'll go back to uh, 
respect to the ordinance itself, uh, questions as far as you know there is from Comcast. One is Scott, and their, and their representatives are here too. Yeah, Thanks. so we have both parties here, and I'll feel free to jump in. It's a non-exclusive agreement. It's a non-exclusive agreement. Basically, what it is is our our franchise cable uh, agreement was out of date, and so we went ahead and updated it. Um, it gives them the right to use the public way. Uh, to install their lines and repair them so we have cable at all. Uh, in exchange, we get the maximum federally allowed rate of 5% of gross revenue. And uh, the agreement itself was based off of uh, a template agreement that was worked out between the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus and Comcast. Um, we took that and looked at some other cities in Illinois, including Bloomington and Peoria and uh, you know, added some provisions based on what they had in their agreements. And uh, we were in discussions back and forth um, with Deb Piscola and Felicia Page. So they're here too if they, anybody has any questions. I, I do have a question. Is it regulated as far as a percentage that the city receives from the internet? Do they receive anything from the Comcast Internet service? It's all gross revenue. Received it's included pay per view, the works? If I may, just because I think this is a point that's worth noting. The franchise agreement only covers our cable television product. Uh, I apologize. This might be something that oh, okay. those that tune I, into the videos uh, might enjoy sure, hearing. Sure, my apologies. Our franchise agreement only covers our cable television product. Uh, internet, phone service aren't referenced in this agreement, and that's by federal law. Currently, um, the city isn't collecting uh, a franchise fee on internet service that's currently prohibited by the federal government. Uh, recent changes may leave things up in the air, but right now that is prohibited. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions other than council or any points? that you wanted to make, Attorney Schweigert, on it? That's all I have. I'll answer any questions if I can. But you know, that uh, the entertainment tax, we also ran into this. It was a suit uh, against the city of Chicago when they passed an entertainment tax to try to bring in the dishes and direct TVs of the world, and they uh, uh, lost that case. Uh, and, you know, years ago, we used to be able to regulate. I mean, as you know, Peru had one of the first cable systems in the uh, country, and then you could even uh, dictate the channels that you had to uh, provide, the number of channels, and we had all those arguments over all those years. But uh, now, essentially, everything is controlled by the uh, federal government. So if you don't like it, talk to your uh, representatives in Congress. And essentially, uh, this has been something in 20 years that we've discussed on a city basis or from residents. And, you know, cities even looked at one time into having their own cable television. We looked at the pros and cons of that. But quite obviously, how technology is evolving right now, whatever's today, tomorrow, it's going to be changing and much different. Uh, so, uh, again, it's a non exclusive arrangement and the city does receive revenues for the rental of the poles. Scott, what, is, what are some of the technology changes? You're on top of that. One of his best friends is Billy Quessy, or something to know that it's pretty high tech. I mean, there's some new technologies coming out. Obviously, there's satellite or dish as an alternative, which um, there's some law that's being discussed right now with the proposed merger with Comcast and Time Warner Cable. Um, you're talking about changing the standards, whether there's preemption or not, uh, and whether municipalities need to prove that there's competitiveness uh, in the market. Uh, they might have the presumption that cable market's competitive. So it's not an easy task for us. Um, and like you said, the FCC and the federal government under the Cable Act pretty much preempts anything that we can do. Um, as far as the internet goes, some other municipalities have tried. Uh, a lot of them have failed. Uh, the one that most people talk about is Provo, uh, Utah, and um, 
you know, they're, they're a city that's 11 times the size of Peru. They took out a $39 million bond to build their uh, cable fiber uh, network and ultimately ended up selling it to Google Fiber for a dollar. Um, and that was in exchange for them agreeing to hook up two-thirds of the remaining houses that hadn't been hooked up. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's a tough thing for us to do, but uh, until the new technology comes out and proves the competitiveness in the field, it's really nothing else we can do. I've got, I've got a, one question. This, in this, does this uh, have to do with the maintenance of the lines, too, in this? Yeah, it's, it's about the public way if they need to go on and go to the polls. And, uh, okay, the only reason I'm asking this, in the event of a storm, which we've had before, I know Chief King is called Comcast, and we've had lines down, and sometimes it takes forever to get them there. That's, is that covered in this agreement? Well, Tony, there's a separate poll license agreement that was adopted about uh, 20 years ago or more. 1996. Oh, not bad. 19 years ago, but uh, and um, the fees that were established then uh, were, uh, you know, Illinois Municipal Electric Agency uh, determined that, but those uh, requirements are addressed in a poll license agreement. You know, we're unique, uh, as would be LAD and Princeton and other municipalities that have their own electric system. Otherwise, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have the separate poll license agreement, but we do. And the other thing, since we have Comcast reps here tonight, is I've had quite a few different people call to complain about the local office leaving the LaSalle Peru area. And it certainly is inconvenient for all of us who are living here. And I don't think it helps a lot with your customer relations. Uh, but, you know, that is something that I'd like to like it to be noted that you know we're not happy with that and uh, if you can bring that back to corporate headquarters uh, we have an ordinance on the floor is there a motion so moved second motion by alderman Racky with a second by alderman perez we have a roll call vote alderman putoff aye ferrari aye lacocious aye perez aye Radke, aye. mueller aye sapienza all in favor. The next ordinance is an ordinance amending uh, the Code of Ordinances, Chapter 114. And this concerns uh, utility connections. And it provides that from and after uh, today's date, no hookup to the city's water or sewer system shall be allowed outside the corporate limits except where annexation is legally impossible, and it imposes a number of uh, conditions concerning that hookup um, that the uh, user is unable to annex to the city because they're not uh, presently contiguous. User agrees in writing and petition the city for annexation when the property does become contiguous. That uh, annexation to the city uh, can be anticipated in the foreseeable future that the city derives and continues to derive significant economic uh, benefit from the user. The economic benefit uh, to the city shall exceed the cost. The user shall pay the cost of extending the water and sewer, but the city may in its discretion contribute to the cost of extending the water and sewer. If the city council finds the extensions to be in the best interest of the uh, city, all plans and specifications are to be uh, presented to and approved by the city engineer. And uh, it adds the following provision. Any user's property shall not be allowed water or sewer services from the city if, one, the water and or sewer service has been active for more than one year with no utilities paid to the city for service during that one year period, and two, the user's property is annexed to or agreed in the future to be annexed to another municipality. What's going uh, on here, and I think the council should uh, uh, discuss it, is that the Truckomatic uh, property used to have a truck wash there years ago. It's, the address is 232 May Road, but essentially it's one property on the south side of um, May Road, LaSalle Road, whatever you want to call it. 
uh, to the east. Uh, the owner of that uh, property petitioned to annex to the city of LaSalle. Uh, the hearing before their plan commission was at 5.30. I was directed to uh, attend and object on behalf of the city of Peru. I prefaced my comments that I knew it was an exercise in futility and uh, it, it proved to be so. But the point is, the city of Peru extended uh, water and sewer uh, to that property 35 to 40 years ago. And the Truckomatic uh, was served by city water and sewer. In fact, the city's easterly extension of sewer ends with a manhole right on that property. The water line then extends uh, further east to the I call it the old Miller Sheet Metal Building, and that is a smaller diameter water mean, but it does go uh, that far east. And uh, the city council finds it um, offensive that uh, LaSalle would annex that property, given the fact that the city already has water and sewer at that property. And I um, made that objection to the um, City Plan Commission and will renew that objection. Also, it will be an exercise in futility at the annexation uh, hearing tomorrow. But the point is, and the city engineer did not deny it, although he didn't have quantities, but um, our estimated cost for the city of LaSalle to extend their water and sewer westward to serve that property was 530 excuse me, $525,000. So we already have water and sewer there. LaSalle's gonna extend it, the, uh, pr uh, their water and sewer from um, Requiria Drive and um, uh, LaSalle Road, Airport Road, whatever, um, westward to serve that property at our estimated cost uh, of $525,000. Frankly, I think it's a waste of uh, municipal resources. All municipalities throughout the state, there are very few exceptions, are on hard economic times, largely because of the uh, accrued and unfunded uh, legacy costs, uh, not only pensions, but uh, health care in a lot of municipalities. And all of us are going to uh, experience significant uh, uh, shortages from what have been historical uh, payments from the state. Ours is estimated around a half a million dollars a year uh, and the cells likewise and our council just uh, felt that it's you know not appropriate when we already have the water and sewer there to annex the property. What's going on obviously and, and nobody uh, denies that is that LaSalle wants to become contiguous to the home property, which would be the property just uh, north of this property comprising maybe 70 acres or whatever. And that would be the property that is uh, just uh, south and east of uh, PetSmart because they view that sometime as becoming uh, commercial. And it may or may not down the road, but what will happen, we're already, uh, of course, contiguous to that property because of the uh, uh, PetSmart and the property up there. But as I said to their plan commission, I'll say to their um, city council tomorrow night, is that if we're both contiguous, what you're going to end up with down the road is a bidding war. So if you're the owner of the property and you're going to do something, you're going to play one municipality against the other for sales tax. So just keep bidding it down and uh, it'll be a net sum game and neither one of us will end up with anything because I know our council would certainly be, be very aggressive if it uh, comes to that and apparently that's what they want to do. I, I think it's unfortunate all the way around. Uh, we attempted to do a boundary line uh, agreement uh, over 20, probably 25 years ago. 
when we did an intergovernmental agreement between the two cities concerning the maintenance of Airport Road, they call it Charter Street, uh, but that kind of, and Bill Bannock was the attorney there, and I believe Al Gunya would have been the uh, LaSalle mayor at that time, but, you know, that kind of fell on uh, deaf ears, but, you know, it's a new world, I think, as far as governmental, uh, uh, the, the, the fiscal responsibilities to everyone. And, and really, even this property is not part of their comprehensive plan that was adopted just April 16th of last year. It was only adopted a year ago. And this is west of uh, their, their plan, all three of their plans, in fact. Uh, they have, uh, at that time, uh, adopted a uh, community core, which is the old downtown you know, in the community core plan in LaSalle, um, was their, quote, top priority of uh, revitalization of the community core. And it doesn't fall uh, within any of those uh, uh, themes. And the, the vision plan, nor the proposed land use plan. But nonetheless, you know, you have that extension. I think it's inevitable that they'll adopt that annexation ordinance tomorrow, the owner of the property can voluntarily uh, petition uh, to annex and as long as the property is contiguous. And they are contiguous because uh, south of 80 is the uh, Myrtle property that's uh, within the uh, city of LaSalle. So I really think it's unfortunate for uh, both cities. I think money would be uh, better spent uh, for that uh, core plan and when, when we already have the utilities there, but that's where we are, and I just wanted to update everyone what happened uh, this evening and what undoubtedly will happen again uh, uh, tomorrow evening. In and layman's terms, Doug, the purpose of this ordinance was if that property is annexed into LaSalle or is uh, agreed to be annexed into LaSalle, then we'll just shut off the utilities. Well, and they have been shut off. I mean, we have the utilities there that were extended 35 to 40 years ago. Uh, they have not been active since uh, December of 1992, I uh, believe. But nonetheless, it's right there. The manhole's right there, you know. And uh, uh, Any other questions? We do have an ordinance on the floor. And we're looking for a motion. I'll make that motion. I'll oh, accept that. Motion by Alderman Lukosius. With a second by Alderman Sapienza. Any further discussion, questions, definitions? We have a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff? Aye. Ferrari? Aye. Lukosius? Aye. Perez? Aye. Radke? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Sapienza? Ordinance passed. Next, we have a resolution authorizing the execution of a services contract with Brown, Hay, and Stevens, LLP, for environmental legal services. Uh, be a result, the mayor form of the city to authorize to execute a services contract uh, with the firm uh, and to execute any further documents necessary uh, deemed appropriate to fulfill the terms of the service contract. And the Corporation Council is authorized to consult with the attorneys on city environmental matters. Uh, for city environmental uh, matters, we used John Filetto in the past. John Filetto would be uh, the late Phil Filetto and uh, Beverly Filetto's son. He's always done environmental uh, work since law school uh, uh, a lot of years ago. And most recently, he was with uh, Hinshaw Culbertson. He was with Howard and Howard and a couple other firms where he was out of uh, Peoria. but. You know, just knowing uh, uh, the area and actually being from uh, Peru, it worked out well. Um, last year, Phil had, uh, I mean, um, John had uh, left that firm and accepted uh, employment at a private corporation in Florida. So he, he works, he's an in-house attorney at a uh, Florida corporation. And the person at uh, Brown, Hay, and Stevens, uh, frankly, I've known her all my life. She's from LAD, uh, and that would be um, uh, the uh, daughter of um, 
Ed and uh, uh, Cor the late Ed and uh, Corrine, I think her not sure if her mom's that she might be deceased too. Uh, Manning out of Lad, they lived on the uh, uh, farm out there, but um, she was the chairman of the Illinois Pollution Control Board. That uh, and before that, she was a Jim Thompson appointee. Uh, she came out of central management, and she was a uh, Governor Thompson appointee to the Illinois State Labor Relations Board. She served on there, and then from there she went as uh, chairman to the uh, Illinois Pollution Control Board. And her name is uh, Claire Manning. And uh, the reason for this, and what's going on here, as you know, we uh, did an environmental, uh, excuse me, an, um, search warrant on the Prue Marathon property on uh, 4th Street. At that time, it came back. The, re the um, warrant was uh, returned to the circuit court. No environmental testing on that was uh, done at that time because just even uh, phase one, you know, environmental testing uh, costs, costs quite a bit. And then the Illinois Attorney General's office promised in about, you know, obviously have a memo, I'm guessing maybe September of last year to file suit against that uh, property. Um, and it's owned by Alpine Corporation, which is a dissolved uh, company. And the owner of that company is down in Texas uh, somewhere. But uh, the property is being foreclosed on uh, by the bank. The Attorney General's office uh, wants to, or said they uh, were going to by January, but it's it's almost May now and it still hasn't been filed, but uh, he said last week he's working on it, but uh, was going to file suit against um, uh, the uh, defunct corporation, the owner of that defunct corporation, and the bank that has the uh, mortgage on there, and that mortgage, I think, is um, also SBA guaranteed. But one of the resolutions of that may be to get a deed for that property. Well, we don't want to get a deed for the property unless we're pretty well assured that we'll go into the Lust Fund or Leaking Underground Storage Tank Fund. That fund, uh, then if we can get that one, get the property, but I don't think we want to accept the property because we don't know what we're getting into unless we know it can get into the lost fund. And that's the purpose of seeking consult from uh, Claire Manning. If you do get into the lost fund, it covers all of the costs for environmental cleanup except for a $10,000 deductible. And uh, it's my understanding uh, that a lot of the companies even waive the $10,000 deductible if they uh, uh, get the work. But that's the uh, purpose. And if other environmental matters uh, come up on the city like that, uh, the last, the only real big one that John Fletto got involved in was the uh, Hunts, Huntsman uh, landfill. That was like 20 years ago, and then we got all that money, and that's why we have a post closure care fund established that's earmarked to cover that environmental testing until that uh, um, started off American or Foster Grant. And then um, I think we can get post-closure uh, finalization from the IEPA on that uh, within the next two years. Isn't that right, Mr. Clenard? It's being worked on now. So. In my question, Doug, in reading the ordinance, it doesn't give a firm uh, cost estimate on that. What do you estimate it to be? I don't think it's a big deal, but I'm no environmental lawyer, and uh, the purpose is to just to get it into the lust fund or be assured that we can get it into the lust fund uh, before we would accept title to the property. Well, I, but I don't think it's a major deal, frankly. Well, I, I'm just saying is, you know, you, you have to put a threshold on it somewhere because quite obviously, is it worth $20,000 for the city? Is oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think we need to be appraised at how much this is costing us and is there an end to it. 
Well, her rate here is, um, and that's a reduced rate for a municipality, is $260 an hour, uh, associates at two twenty an hour, and paralegals at seventy five dollars an hour. That's the that's what the contract uh, provides. That would be, uh, you know, anything done would be on a uh, monthly statement. But you know, I'll keep the council advised on, you know, if we see if it's going to be a big deal, then we're not going to do anything. But regardless, that's not going to go away. That, that situation and it's probably better to address it sooner rather than later because the tanks that are in there are just red tagged but red tagged uh, means and uh, the chief can uh, explain that be after tanks are dormant for a certain amount of time they cannot be reactivated to sell fuel so they red tag them that doesn't mean that they're leaking or anything else I mean, obviously, in time, everything is going to leak. So I think it would be better to address that situation if we can sooner rather than later because there may not be any environmental contamination. But if there's environmental contamination, I think you want to get it into the underground storage tank fund. Any other questions from the council? I think it's important to move on. I mean, because we don't want to let it linger. And my understanding is the owner of the property is there is no responsible party. No, he's judgment proof and I had defaulted in the mortgage foreclosure. What obligation does the uh, the lender have? Well, that's going to be a theory uh, that may be the first time the AG's office filed it. Um, and you can keep this out of the press. I just want to keep everybody as informed as much as uh, I know. But this went from one corporation to another corporation to another corporation, all SBA guaranteed. And the assistant attorney general thinks that it's kind of a churn the file uh, doing these financings with SBA for the loan origination fees. So even though they wouldn't technically be a responsible party, you know, he thinks, well, you know, this isn't just the innocent local bank making a one-time loan. This is the same bank making this loan to successor corporations, so they're getting these loan origination fees every time they're making the loan. That's going to be his theory. Whether or not it's going to be successful or not, I don't know. But then rather than take the property, the bank may just say, hey, we're not going to fight the Attorney General's office. We'll give you a deed. So that's why we got to know if we'd be willing to even accept a deed. Just because somebody gives you a deed, you don't have to take it. Well, we've been looking at that since what? When did it close? Oh nine, oh eight. You know, I think we've pretty well exhausted everything that we can do from our end, and it's time to get somebody else to fight the fight for us. Yeah, and then if they don't, this may be something. Uh, you know, if the AG's office doesn't go that way. Then maybe you end up, um, you know, like we acquired the Econo Lodge property. But I think, you know, we knew what we're getting into there before we did that. And yeah, that, that that they can get into that fund, and and there isn't another environmental lawyer around. And believe me, Peoria rates are way a lot cheaper than Chicago rates. I, I just need, I think we need from a safety standpoint, you know, for the neighborhood uh, that it is taken care of, but I I think we really need to keep a close line on, on the cost of that and need to be updated with it and set a threshold of what is it worth for us. I would be surprised if it was over $10,000. I really would, but I really don't know. Okay. Uh, I, we can stop at any time that we would like to. Uh, is there a motion for the resolution? Motion by Alderman Sapienza. Is there a second on the floor? I'll second it. Second by Alderman Lacocious. A roll call vote. Alderman Poff? Aye. Ferrari? Aye. Lacocious? Aye. Perez? Aye. Radke? Aye. Mueller? Aye. And Sapienza? All in favor? Motion passed. Any other reports from the city attorney? No, sir. Unfinished business. We have tonight a motion to reappoint Tom Payton to the Police Pension Board for a two-year term beginning on May 1st, 2015, 
and expiring on April 30th of 2017. I'll make that motion, Your Honor. A motion by Alderman Perez. Second. With a second by Alderman Radke. It has been determined by legal counsel that uh, Tom Payton can hold a spot on the pension board as well as a spot on the city council. So uh, there is a motion in place, uh, aye or nay? Aye. 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 All in favor? Any other unfinished business, Council? Uh, new business. I have one thing, Your Honor. Um, yes, sir. We could, uh, if the Council could possibly look into this, I know this is um, my last formal meeting, <clears throat> but if there could be some discussion and possibly looking into um, a no burn ordinance, you know, we have a leaf vac and, you know, we have a, a great pickup for leaf bags. And it really is a, <clears throat> a pretty big nuisance for neighbors and all that to uh, deal with smoke. So I was wondering if the uh, council would take a look at that in the safety committee um, to see about a no burn ordinance for the city of Peru. You already have an ordinance. You don't have a burning sign. You need to get a, a permit to burn. A leaf. No, well, they could burn leaves. No, no. no you no, can burn leaves. Burn. April and May and uh, October and November. Yeah, I, I think that's a good move. We're taking yeah. under uh, public services report if that can be placed on their agenda for discussion. Okay. Any other Thank you. new business? We have a motion tonight to seek applicants for a part time administrative assistant position for the city clerk's office. Uh, city clerk, you want to give us a rundown on the need for this? Well, this uh, this comes out of discussions between the finance officer and myself uh, regarding our our operations there. As you know, uh, when when uh, finance officer Miller came on board, he began to oversee direct uh, supervision of the bookkeeping department. And one of his observations uh, early on was uh, observing the bookkeeping staff routinely helping out with the utility billing staff, which which has not been uncommon in our department, but uh, from an operational standpoint, you have a utility billing person that is uh, receiving payments at the counter and reconciling their drawer at the end of the night, and then that drawer goes into the bookkeeping department the very next day to be reconciled as part of our checks and balances system, and it works very well. Uh, you know, appropriately noted by Finance Officer Miller, uh, if a bookkeeper is out receiving utility billing payments, uh, that might be the same bookkeeper that the very next day is reconciling the drawer for which she processed payments. Now, we have a good group of, of mature and trust, trustworthy employees there, but that um, is an observation that we made, and it's been noted in the audit in terms of segregation and duty, and it's not uncommon with small municipalities there isn't the ability to hire enough people to segregate all of the duties when it comes to handling money. So uh, that's, the, that's the primary reason. The secondary reason is we do have a lot of employees in the clerk's office with a significant amount of vacation and leave time. In particular, our two utility billing clerks have uh, a combined 10 weeks of vacation plus uh, personal days and sick days and, and birthdays. So that's a lot of coverage required by someone other than a utility billing clerk to process and receive payments. So it seemed in the best interest to, to perhaps install a person into the clerk's office um, as, as a, a part-time employee that could provide additional coverage for when those employees are on vacation. Obviously, there's, there's always other duties that can be done quicker or more efficiently if you have uh, some additional personnel. So we thought that well, the initial thought was actually to try a, a summer person, to maybe look for a higher uh, high school age or college age person to sort of install in the office for the season and sort of just see how it works, just see how the workflow would go. And then after further discussions with HR and with uh, Finance Officer Miller, we thought, you know, if we're going to put somebody in that's going to have that level of responsibility, taking utility payments, working with the rest of the staff, working on filing, you know, the, the other duties that are there, we'd rather have somebody that, that maybe we could would vet a little better and screen a little better and have a, a stronger candidate uh, that we could count on, and not just for the summer season, but all year round. So that's uh, our line of thinking. There's obviously uh, a big issue. You know, it's sort of segregation of, of duties is a, is a big buzzword, and it's, 
certainly worth noting, but there are other duties and other responsibilities that I think we could uh, justify having another part-time person in the office. Uh, when it was brought to the Finance Committee, the main concern of the Finance Committee was, again, segregating those duties. The same person who's collecting the money can't be the same one that accounts for it at the end of the day. Uh, so we wanted to segregate that out as been suggestion. The other time is it is a part-time administrative position. Uh, there's no benefits involved in it. Its base really is an hourly wage. There's a job description out for it, and the city clerk will be taking applications for it as soon as the position is approved. So is there a motion or any additional questions? We're going to limit the hours in some form. Oh, it'll definitely be a limited hours. Obviously, the Affordable, Her uh, Affordable Health Care Act has sort of set that parameter for businesses and municipalities, so it'll be less than 30 hours. Okay. I move that we uh, seek applicants for part-time administrative assistant for the clerk's office. Second, Your Honor. Yeah, motion by Alderman Radke with a second by Alderman Ferrari. Is there any additional comments or questions? We'll have a roll call vote. Alderman Puthoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Perez. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. Uh, the other item on tonight, as far as a new business concern, is to discuss the commercial contractor registration licensing. And really, how this came up wasn't anything to do with union or non union or anything of that matter. It really came up to a point of where it was brought to the committee as a result of safety. There was a contractor who was working in Peru. Uh, an incident happened where we needed immediate attention. We did not have that contractor on file. We didn't have the number of the general contractor or knew who it was <coughs> to contact that. Uh, Jeff and Eric, if you can kind of point us on why we're reviewing this or why we're looking into this. Yeah, basically what we're looking at is we currently have a residential contractor's license um, in place. And looking around at a lot of different cities, we're kind of behind the eight ball a little bit. Uh, um, the other cities around us already have a, a, a commercial contractor's license also. What we're looking at, uh, for example, is with, with commercial uh, contractors coming in town and working, we have no idea what they're doing, where they're at. Um, we really don't have, we can't control what they're doing. Um, so we want to get our hands around this. And not only with that, but uh, we're going to be looking at bonding, which we're going to be talking with the corporate council on on some different areas of what bonding is going to be for for different um, basically different classifications of the of the of the license we're currently looking at three different classifications for that um, depending on how much money uh, that the job's going to be so we're 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 going through it right now um, I'm sure we're going to have something in place by the next council meeting in ordinance form to vote on and again, it was presented at least to the committee, not as uh, a way to financially benefit from it, but more or less a safety standpoint from the city and certainly our departments that deal with that. Any other questions? Again, this is just a parameter if it's something we should proceed with to look at that and, and then they'll come up with an ordinance form for that. Uh, everybody's okay to move yeah, ahead with I'm it? Fine to proceed. At least put something together we can review. Along with this, we're also looking at a business registration license. Basically, that's where a business is going to have to come in and register with the city so they know who we're actually having in the city. Some businesses just pop up and we don't we don't really know that they're even out there they're, until you see a sign on the window or something. So we're currently working on that also, and we hope to roll that out at the exact same time we do this contract. Yeah, and it's simple. It's as simple as common sense as an alarm goes off in their business. Who do you contact? What's their phone number? What happens? They need to clean up a piece of property. Who do we contact? And uh, again, they're going to work on that. Anything else in new business, Council? Okay, move ahead to petitions and communications. First, I have a communication from DF Partnership requesting waivers, approval of final plat and variance for the resubdivision of lots 19A and 21B in Liberty Lane Village uh, 2, first edition. I'll make a motion that we accept the communication and refer it to design and review and zoning. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that will be referred to the 
appropriate zoning planning. Yeah, process. I think it'd have to be a joint hearing because I see they were also requesting a variance. So uh, the plat, I just looked at it briefly before I came over. It was a uh, set up as duplexes, uh, probably uh, three larger lots, I think, for uh, duplexes, and now they're just changing it to single family residences rather than duplexes. Maybe five lots instead of uh, six, five single family residences instead of uh, six or three multiple family duplexes. Uh, item two. Uh, next communications from uh, Rosabal Vasquez requesting permission to hold a soccer tournament at Baker Lake on Sunday, May 3rd from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, notes uh, that she belongs to a church group in LaSalle, wants to make uh, a soccer tournament for adults and planning about seven teams of around 12 people from 7 a.m. to uh, from 9 a.m. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. We have that on the docket tonight, Council, which you're directed. They will have to provide insurance, correct? We will note that in our letter. Insurance. Yeah, that's insurance. a good point uh, to have that with the chief of police. When you do have an event, and I'm sure they're charging a fee for it, then it becomes something a little more than a game. So we have to be uh, properly insured for that. So it, does that need to go through the park? I mean, when does the soccer season start for the? Uh, uh, not until late in the summer. So, so there's no need for them to go to the park board and get any scheduling constraints? Just my suggestion to refer things like this to the park. I, I was just going to say that. I mean, this is my. I can. I'll be there. I can take it to them. Okay. okay. We'll remove that to them. Any objections from the council? Uh, any other petitions, communications? No, Your Honor. Uh, is there any public comment tonight? I do have a speaker tonight, an individual reverend. Would you like to update us on the council? Uh, what you're looking for. I'm Evangelist Michael Hubbard. The name of my ministry is Taking Back the City. I've been working in the city of Rock Falls going on our sixth year in street ministry, and we would like to hold a revival here at Centennial Park and in Far North Shelk, a two-day revival. We'd be running Friday from, say, 5 to 8 p.m., Saturday from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, how many people? I'd only estimate 50 to 100. I, I really cannot judge that. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know how many people will come up. Sometimes it's small, sometimes it's large. It's been, it's, for a council approval. And what date were you looking for? Chief, isn't it? Uh, sometime in June. Whatever dates are available for that shelter. You're looking for a shelter or a tent? Yeah, couldn't he just stop down at the station and see if one use the shelter? Yeah. Uh, typically, what uh, you'd have to do, Reverend, is just contact uh, the chief of police with the dates, refer to the council, right. and then we'll move ahead with that. All right. But I appreciate you coming here tonight, and uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, they have the schedule at the police department for when the shelter is open and available. Uh, any other public comment tonight? Uh, no closed sessions on the agenda tonight. Uh, again, I'll move for a motion for adjournment. So moved, Your Honor. Second. Motion by Alderman Ferrari with the second by Alderman Lacocious. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.